Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Game Stormers. The game plays three to six players, takes roughly 45 to 90 minutes to play, and is for ages nine and up. And in the game Game Stormers, you are brainstorming games. You're basically going to be going on a journey where you're going to be gathering mechanics, items, and storylines in an attempt to create the best game concept ever. Now, throughout the time you're doing that, you're going to be gathering new cards and combinations to form your game and you'll also be participating in the arena where you're going to make small mini game concept designs where you'll score points along the way. At the end of the game, your board is going to be hopefully filled and you're going to tally up all your points based on how well you placed your board pieces together, based on if you won different arena battles against other storylines, and of course your character abilities and any cards that you might have with bonus objectives on them, and finally your big story at the end of the game where you describe your game and people vote on the winner who gets additional victory points, have the most, and you win the game. Okay, let's go ahead and go into how to uh, set the game up, how to play, and then my review. To set up the game, Game Stormers, you're going to take the item deck and shuffle it and deal out six cards onto the playing field. Take the mechanic deck and shuffle that as well, place it next to the item deck, and finally the storyline deck, you will do the same as well and place it below the mechanic deck. Take the player victory point card and set it somewhere within reach of all players and give every single player a player board. Each of the player boards is gonna have a unique piece of art on the back to illustrate which characters are which. You can also go ahead and give each player two characters, which they're going to select one of them and place that that character onto their board into the character slot. Discard the other one, and then give every single player one mechanic and one item card. You're also going to give each player a certain number of dry erase cards, which they can use along with a dry erase marker, a player reference card, which will be used for what you do on your turn, set aside any of the die that you'll be using for the theater, and then any arena tokens that you'll be using when you combat in the arena. After that, somebody gets a first player marker, and the first player with the marker is the one who will take their turn and begin the game. Playing the game Game Stormers is very simple. Basically, you're going to take your player reference card and you'll need this throughout the game because you're going to be able to perform two actions on your turn. Uh, the only rule with this, because you can take them in any order that you'd like, is the arena. On the arena, you're only able to perform this action if two other players haven't previously done it. And once that second player has in the round, then you can no longer do the arena because the arena is like a challenge mode that two people compete against each other. Otherwise though, you can do the actions like market, where you're going to be able to take an item from the market. There are six to start with, and as you take them, are there going to be less and less as the game proceeds? If ever the market runs out, throw up six new cards. There's the theater, where you can roll all these dice here. Then you're going to select one of them and create a card with that symbol and be able to utilize it on your board if you'd like. So it can become an item or a mechanic or a storyline. You have the temple, and the temple is going to let you discard an item and use its discard ability. And all the cards, or most of them have a discard use on the bottom of their card, which will let you do something unique with that card's specific ability. Next, you have the Forum. The Forum is going to let you draw three cards from the Mechanic or Storyline deck, and then you can choose one and put it into your hand of cards. And finally, the Arena. And like I said before, you only can have this done if two players haven't previously done it. What happens is you'll take one of these points, which is going to be a victory point at the end of the game if you have it, and uh, you're going to be then drawing an item, Mechanic, and Storyline at the end of the round, which I'll explain in a second. Because basically, everybody's going to take one of these, uh, two of these actions. You can take two of the same one or not. Once everybody has gone through then there's the cleanup phase. During the cleanup phase, you're going to resolve the arena. Basically, the two people who made the arena actions, they're gonna have one of these little game stormer tokens. So if it was me and Billy over here, uh, me and Billy are gonna draw an item, a mechanic, and a storyline card. We're gonna lay these cards out, and in any order, we're going to basically create a story with a game functionality. Like, we're making our own little game, uh, and we're trying to have other people judge which one of us made the best game with the mechanic and concept and theme. And whoever wins, based on the majority vote, will get both of these tokens and score two points at the end of the game. So you want to keep these around when you score them. If it's a tie, you each get one, and if there's only one person who does the arena action and has one token, they'll just keep that token for points at the end of the game. Uh, then you're going to move on to the notebook phase, where players will have cards in their hand, they'll take one of the cards and place it in one of the slots. There's two mechanic slots, two items, and a storyline slot. And you'll place it down onto one of the uh, sp spots that matches the card's type, 
And then you're going to go ahead and restock the market. If there's not six cards, put, uh, you're gonna, well, regardless, you'll discard all the cards of the market, put six new ones out, and you'll have fresh cards every phase. Discard down to five cards into your hand, if you have more than five cards in your hand, and move the first player turn marker, and then proceed clockwise once again with that new player. And you'll do this five times. And so what hopefully will be, everybody will have a storyline, two mechanics, two items, and of course their character they started with. Another thing to note too is the character has a unique ability or abilities on it, and you can do those abilities, whatever they say, based on the card's different abilities. And then after five rounds proceeds, you're going to score. And you're going to score a number of ways. We have this little handy dandy cheat sheet here. You'll score victory points for all of the cards in the top left hand corner. There's going to be a victory point total, which might also have some bonuses on the bottom. You'll add all those up on your player board and you'll score it down here on this little placard. Then whoever has the most of one type of card will score two points. So if I have five sci-fi and she has three high C's, I have the most of one type, I score two points. If there's ever a tie, it's one point. The most of all types, meaning whoever has a variety of different types will score two points or in a tie there's one. Arena victories, you'll get two points if you win them or one for ties. You'll be able to vote for the winner at the end of the game, which will score an extra two points, and then you'll tally them all up, and whoever has the most points after five rounds is the winner of the game, Game Stormers. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward game. It involves a little bit of different types of mechanics in this story-based, like, social element game. At first glance, Game Stormers appears to be a storytelling game, and in fact, it is. But it's mixed with a couple other different types of mechanics. One being there is going to be a management system, a tableau management system, which you are going to try and find the correct cards, the correct types, and place them on your board. Uh, some of the cards are just straight up a certain number of points. It's usually one, two, or three. But other cards, which I really like, uh, can be lower, one point, but they get plus two whenever you have other types of things on your board. And that's what I really enjoy doing, is trying to kind of craft my narrative board uh, to give myself the most amount of points I can, but all at the same time, I have to realize that at the end of the game, there's additional victory points for telling the best story utilizing the cards that I have. And if the cards are mismatched, it's going to be harder to tell a correct story and thusly get voted on to succeed in the game. So you have to kind of balance that out. Uh, there's also a creative element when it comes to creating your own cards. There's a big, kind of like if you can draw your own card utilizing a certain symbol on the die that you've rolled, uh, then uh, add a certain number of point values. So whenever you don't have a card that you need, you're always gonna be guaranteed to get the middle ground amount of points, which is two, which is basically setting this game up to always be a very close scoring game. Because I guess technically if you wanted to, you could every round create your own unique card and create your own unique field without having to go for these items here. But if you do, you're never gonna get the bonus points because you can get up to four points on a card or just the basic three whenever you pick one of these guys up. Uh, so you can set your, yourself up for success when it comes to the story and creating the right kinds of combinations of cards, but not what your highest point total can be, which is nice. It adds a little bit of a creative element. It allows players to make their own board up, and if they don't want to, they don't have to do that either. Maybe you're not the greatest drawer or whatever writer, or maybe you just don't want to make your own cards. You can go ahead and just focus on the management aspect of your Tableau system. Another thing I really like about this game is the artwork. Um, half of the artwork is not done, and as you can see when you look at some of these guys here, some of them are just little symbols, whereas other ones are full-blown artwork. Well, uh, that's because some of the ones that are just the symbols are just there as placeholders when you got things like this, which are beautiful, or things like this, which are really, really nice. Uh, some of the artwork in this game is excellent. Now, it's hard to tell, it's not hard to tell which one is necessarily the correct type of artwork, but I don't want to go ahead and say like, this is the real one and this is the fake one. I, although I'm pretty certain that's the case, but what I can say that they said 50% of the artwork is done in this game and 50% of the artwork is excellent, which leads me to believe that all of the game is going to have excellent artwork. Whoever they chose for artists for this game, I am very, very, very impressed. They have some really, really great character design, uh, elements to the story that you add. It just feels really, really fleshed out. Uh, it, this is probably the best artwork I have seen for a storytelling game since like uh, Dixit and, and those type of games, uh, narrative driven style. Uh, which actually blend into creating your own story. Because you have like Mysterium and you have Dixit that do the same thing, but it's kind of like a uh, vagary 
uh, so to speak. In this one here, it's you put elements together and then you make that story, which I love. I like the idea of making my own story for my own game with my own mechanics. Uh, it feels like I've kind of constructed this thing and then people can vote on it based on how I made my game, through how, how I played and created my game throughout the endeavor of what Game Stormers is. The fact that I can dig through the different cards is nice. I love playing the discreditabilities on the cards. I want to see even more different ways to score additional points. I don't know how they would derive that, but I really enjoyed the extra bonus points I got from placing the ones down to see if I could complete my objectives to like risk it to go big or go home. Um, I thought the game probably lasted a little longer than it should, not because the game felt like it was long. It actually is about, right, it says about 45 minutes to 60. We played about 45 minutes, but in the fact that I felt like I already had all the cards that I wanted in my hand on like the fourth fourth round, right? And I want to feel like I'm right on the edge of my seat when I'm about to place down the last card in the game. And maybe it was just me and Callie, or just that specific game that we played, because we played a couple other ones that seemed kind of similar. But uh, in a couple cases, it was just like, you know, we already pretty much had what we wanted. Um, and so I'd like to see it even reduced by one. Maybe you have to play two cards in the last round. I don't know how you would exactly do it, but the timer just felt like I was like, okay, I've got what I wanted. But maybe that's the point. Maybe you kind of want to already have your thing built. I don't know. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference because uh, at, at this game's core, it's a story building game. Uh, the points is kind of nice, but what I really enjoyed about this game is creating my own uh, game, creating my own story narrative um, and putting together the story based on the different items and mechanics that I would be utilizing in the game. I like creating my own cards. That was fun. I would prefer instead of actually picking the symbol to create um, a card based on that symbol because I don't think it matters what the artwork is. So being able to utilize more of your artistic side would be even more excellent based on the fact that we have these to utilize. Um, what, other, what other things? There's, oh, uh, some abilities on the characters are excellent, and other ones are like the ones per game. Like, there's one ability that lets you, every turn, I can discard a card from the item deck, item, item stack over here, or use their ability uh, as an action. Um, as opposed to using one of the actions on this card here to do it from your hand. That's really, really, really powerful. Whereas this one is, once a game, I can take a card from the mechanics discard pile and put it into my hand. And that's, you know, pretty good. But I feel like that one's a little, a little overpowered. I think they could just tweak that a little bit where you have to discard a card from your hand to use a uh, discard ability in this pile here. I'm kind of nitpicking, but I, I think you get the idea. Um, yes, overall narrative, uh, artwork, the story building, it all works excellent. The arena is super fun. Uh, utilizing these little tokens works very well as well. I would suggest playing this game with more than three players though, because otherwise you're just gonna have one judge when it comes to the arena. And if you have that, if there's just one judge, I think you should probably take the arena element out. It's not as beneficial when it's just one player having to judge back and forth about whose narrative is better. I like to see it when there's at least two people who can kind of come to a consensus together against two different opposing stories. The ending of the game works very well. Everybody's gonna, what I would suggest, everybody writes down the winner on a card and hides it, and then they all reveal, and then whoever has the majority is the winner. But only the people who voted for the majority are the winner, so you have to vote for the best story, not for your preference or bias. So you just have to pick what you think everybody else is going to pick, and what you think everybody else is gonna pick is gonna be based on what the popular story is most likely going to be. Uh, yes, so, uh, did I enjoy this game? Yes, this is an excellent narrative-driven storytelling game. It's got some tableau management, which I enjoy. It has a bunch of beautiful artwork, which I love. At first I was sad that I thought that this artwork was covered up because you're using the other side of the board, but I realized that it's on the actual cards, so this is just an extra little bonus plus. As you can see, they're gorgeous. And I think for those of you who like storytelling games, tableau management, narrative-driven games about making your own game, you're going to enjoy this one quite profusely. You can see the amount of effort put into this game. It was in excess, and they just did a really great job of being creative and letting you guys be creative as well. Uh, if you don't like story-driven games, you're not going to enjoy this one. And if you don't like being creative or trying to come up with something on the spot, you're not going to like this game. There's certain parts where in the arena where you're just going to draw three random cards and have to come up with something really quickly, and that can make certain people anxious or uh, feel like they're, I don't know what to do. And I guess that's, that's a possibility. And there are quite a few people in my friends group, friends group who have a hard time doing this thing. But in my case, I tell you, you should probably just do it because you're going to get better and better at it as you do it. And that's going to help you in your ability to read and comprehend and, of course, to write and uh, creating 
is always something that's going to be a benefit if you can ever like uh, get over those things. But regardless, yes, it fits a certain niche of a certain type of people. If you're interested in the game Game Stormers, you can go ahead and hit the link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this game, which I believe is on Kickstarter right now. Thank you guys so much. Let's go hit that outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Game Stormers. Like I said, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos that we produce every day, Monday through Friday on this channel. And of course, every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we do a live stream where we play games just like this one. In fact, we might be playing this one on our next live stream, who knows? Uh, you can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. See us jump down and play some of these games. See us play, review other games that aren't on this channel that are in written form from other people who are not myself who review games. And you can also check out all other stuff. We have Instagram, TikTok, and all that other good stuff. Moonshell Mermaid Game, my wife's game, is currently available for uh, purchase. It's on the website, unfilteredgames.com, if you want to go ahead and take a look at a puzzle-building mermaid game. And that's pretty much all I got for you. So, as always, I look forward to brain or game storming with you uh, next time.